Hey y'all, it's Chelsea Bites. And if you can't tell by the parts laid out on the table, we're bringing you a new gaming build. We're gonna be going through the parts, why we're making the change, and you'll get to watch the build as we go along through the video. Bonus points, this build is sponsored by DTS. Being a part of DTS's freshman class allows me to share their latest and next generation object-based multi-dimensional audio technology. DTS provides a new dimension of sound immersion in many products you may already recognize. They've made this build possible, and I'm so happy to share it with you. All right, let's break out some parts. So for our processor, we picked the i7-10700K. This processor has about eight cores and 16 threads, a 3.8 base clock, which can be boosted up to 5.1. Compared to my previous build, which was an i7-8700K. This has an increase in both cores and clock speed. So we picked the Gigabyte Z490i Aorus Ultra Gaming Motherboard. This has four USB 3.2 ports, Q-Flash, and it's wireless. Now, as a note, this has eight phases, 90 up stages, and tantalum polymer caps on its output filter, which makes amazing voltage regulation when it comes to overclocking on an ITX board. Good pick! So we also picked up 32 gigs of G-Skills Trident Z Neo RAM running at 3600 MHz and a cast latency of 16 clock cycles. And of course, it lights up. Now I haven't had the pleasure of using an M.2 SSD. But here we are leveling up with the Samsung 970 EVO Plus. One terabyte shouldn't have any problem loading up any games. And it's a lot faster than a SATA SSD. For our power supply, we picked up the Corsair SF750 80 Plus Platinum. It's one of the few power supplies that will fit our case that you'll see later in the video, while also providing enough power for future upgrades. My favorite part of the build was picking our CPU cooler. The NCXT Kraken Z63. It's really convenient because it takes up less motherboard space than your typical CPU cooler. And I'm not ashamed to say it, I like how it looks. I like the LCD display and I'm, I'm ready to do some pretty creative stuff with it. So, expect more. So we could talk about the case. Uh, it's a very unique case and we figured instead of explaining it, that we just build it for you. So just watch for that later on in the video. And you may have also noticed that we didn't talk about a GPU. For the purposes of this build, we'll be using a 1080 Ti, but we're hoping to upgrade to a 3080 <laughs> if they ever come out. So just for reference, my old build consisted of an i7-8700K. Not bad, but would definitely stutter on some of today's games. No SSD, EVGA GTX 1080 for the win, all in a not so cute case. Not only did my PC need a performance upgrade and a makeover, I literally wanted to bring it out of the box. So without further ado, let's get into the build. So this case is from China. I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, I had to do a little work to get this case. It wasn't on Amazon or Newegg, just straight from the maker's site. I know it looks like a workbench, but it has an elegant and thoughtful design. Here I attach the faceplate to the tiny power supply that I have here, and then attach it to the side of the workbench, making sure all of the screws are tight, and the power supply attaches like so. Now the power cables. My tip is to attach these before you screw any power supply down in any build. And these were kind of big, so make sure to get the appropriate cables. Now I'm attaching the PCIe extension cable, and then I screw down the risers for the motherboard. Now we're getting to the frisky part. Make sure to ground yourself with an anti-static wristband and attach your motherboard.
Now go ahead and place that PCIe extension cable into the slot where you'd put your graphics card and plug in the power cables from your PSU into your motherboard. Now for the fun part. Line up the gold corner on your CPU with the gold corner on your CPU socket and place the CPU right on top of it. It's an Intel CPU, so it should just kind of float. Fun tip, please save the CPU socket cover, just in case you need to return your motherboard for repair or returns or anything like that. Don't throw it away. After I install my G-Skill RAM, I go through the slightly tedious task of installing my M.2 SSD, which requires me to remove a couple of things peel back some tape, and slide it in. Screw here, screw there, bada bing, bada boom, done. Now, if you thought that whole process was tedious, wait until we get to the CPU cooler. Not only do we have to use screws, but we also have to attach a backplate to the back of the motherboard. We're going to have to move on to the next faceplate. And we'll start by attaching the power button and the power cable. Start with your power button by unscrewing it and attaching it to the case properly. And make sure it's really tight when you're done, so when you press the button it feels like it's actually registering. and pull the cables through so you can attach them later. And you guessed it, the power cable is next, so slide that in, and slide the cable itself through the back so you can attach it later as well. The key is to hide all of the cables, so you'll see that they'll all fit straight down the middle. And now for the big chimichanga. Put the plates together, screw everything down to connect them, and make sure to screw down your power cable as well on the case. Since this case is a little different, you'll have to screw a brace onto your graphics card to line up with the designated slot on the case itself. Not all GPUs fit this case, so make sure to check if yours is compatible. Then go ahead and plug in your graphics card into the PCIe extension cable, making sure everything is secure. After that, go ahead and struggle to plug in the power cables <laughs> into your graphics card. I think my fingers are just a little bit too long. After that, screw it all down to make sure everything is secure. Warning, this case does not come with this all-in-one cooler bracket, so make sure you buy that separately. And if you do, do not install the bracket that comes with the case on by default. So just be aware of that. After we've installed the side panels, I can apply the CPU paste and put on the CPU cooler, the radiator, and the fans and call this build complete. hours of putting this together and making up our own instructions from time to time, we were able to make it to post, which is arguably the most important part of your build journey. We still have a lot of work to do after this, benchmarking, overclocking, and making sure each part works as intended, but this is a win. It's great to see your computer boot up and work as it should after you've put it together, especially on the first try. I love this build. It looks exactly as I intended, but I don't think this will be our last. 
It's gonna be kind of hard to top this though. Thank you so much for watching this build come together. And thank you, DTS, for making this possible. Seriously, we couldn't do it without you. And if you have any questions about how this build came together, you know, performance or otherwise, leave the comments down below. And like, subscribe, and share this if you can. Be very helpful. But thank you so much, and I'll catch you guys on the next upload. Bye. Oh yeah, there's definitely some some stuff after this you might want to watch. Open <laughs> 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 this up. This is also kind of stressful because this thing is so tight. All right, there we go. Pull that back. Identify the corner. Make sure you're very gentle with this. There shouldn't be any pressure, any anything. So the gold corner is there and you can match it up on the motherboard. There's like a identified corner here. You just gently drop it in there. Shouldn't drag anything, shouldn't press down on anything. It should just be level seated. Just kind of touch it, make sure it's loading and we're good. Now you can close that back up, make sure it's under there, go ahead and if this just falls off, we just take it off, but lock it in. And we are and good to go. Make sure to keep this. Do not throw this away. <laughs> Do not throw this away. Look, look at me in my face. Keep this. Don't throw it away just in case you want to make returns. I don't care if you're like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I don't want to make a return. Keep it. All right? Keep every part. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put this back in our CPU box. Put these really, really thick cables. So we'll see. Was that you? Hmm. That slide? Yeah. No. I didn't. We got ghosts. It's ghosts. It's ghosts. It's ghost confirmed, unless it was Shroddy dragging something across the floor. Alright, so I'm gonna take this back here. Alright, we'll be back.